Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, younger me was visiting Latin America. While there, I stumbled upon a bootleg video game store. To put things into perspective, I paid a total of five US dollars. In exchange, I got Titan Quest, burnt on a blank CD, Russian Half-Life 2, which I finished without understanding a single word, Russian Serious Sam 2, which was actually just malware, but also, I got this little disc containing not Rise of Nations, but the sci-fi fantasy steampunk spin-off Rise of Legends, released 2006 and covered 17 years later, which by personal standards is a quick and timely review, Rise of Legends is a game I hold close to my heart. First of all, I don't actually have a disc anymore, so I torrented a copy, installed it, found out it was entirely in Russian, which uh, I should have guessed from the installer looking the way it is, downloaded an English copy instead, and that told me to insert disk one. So I copy the executable from the Russian copy to the English copy, and finally it launched. Moral of the story, graft shit together until it works. Speaking of which, this game runs perfectly on Windows 10, flawlessly, impeccably, and I can literally see the pixels for the pre-rendered cutscenes. Anyway, setting, we're on some planet. Which one? I don't know, because video game bootleggers in Rio typically don't give you a manual. So, uh, I'm kind of just making this up as I go along. An alien ship breaks up in orbit and crash lands onto the planet. And uh, that's all the background you get. Now, 99% uh, of this game is the campaign, which is mainly what I'm going to cover. So let's start by playing the Vinci. Who are the Vinci? In this world, there are no humans only Italians. Accordingly, everyone is Italian, everything is industrialized, and tensions are running high. This game is pasta punk, ravioli core, if you will. You play as Giacomo, an inventor from the city-state of Miana, governed by his brother Petruzzo. Together with General Carlini, your army sets out to investigate an alien crash site. Seeing your approach, a rival known as the Doge blasts the mountainside using an alien weapon. Petruzzo throws you to safety, but in doing so, he becomes a pancake. As you watch Petruzzo marinate in his own ragu, you vow to get vengeance on the doge. The first two missions serve as a hands-on tutorial to get acquainted with a core mechanics. You control any number of units, tactics matter, and each of your heroes have unique abilities on preset cooldowns. Winning the game involves conquering a rival cities while holding on to your own, which you have to manually expand by building specific districts. You have two main resources, Timonium and Gold. Timonium, uh, similar to Cobalt, is extracted from the ground by Congolese miners who do it simply for the love of extracting rare earth metals to fuel the Italian war machine. Gold is obtained by building merchant districts. Each one allows you to make a single caravan, which will automatically trade with the nearest neutral settlement. The longer you trade, the larger your trade deficit, which you can use to forcibly buy out the entire neutral dwelling. This is the peaceful option. You pay gold, the price of which goes down depending on how much you've traded already ready, and in exchange, we get a functional dwelling and all the troops defending it. This system makes sense, except in the second campaign, where for some reason I could buy out an entire nest of carnivorous salamanders, which uh, goes to show, doesn't matter how evolved you are, you're not immune to the free market. There's also industrial districts, which give you mutually exclusive prototypes, and military districts, which are exactly as they sound. They increase your population cap, allowing you to take shit over using the less peaceful option. This involves uh, breaking shit until you start taking it over. If you're very impatient, or there's a tactical advantage from doing so, you can click the number that appears in the center to forcibly storm the dwelling, taking immediate control. This is incredibly expensive, as you sacrifice an equal number of grunts, but hey, you get to see uh, physics particle effects as everything breaks apart. This shit looked photorealistic when I saw it for the first time. I was thinking, damn, I wonder how crazy video games will be in the future. Little did I know, I had uh, Overwatch 2 paid PvE Season 1 to look forward to. Originally, Giacomo starts on a horse, but in Mission 2, you get a considerable upgrade to your vehicle. Get into Eva, Giacomo, or Carlini will have to fight again. After attempting or succeeding a mission, you get taken to the overland map, and time progresses by one turn. Here, you can choose your next move, spend experience on uh, upgrading heroes, army points on buying units, research points to unlock new units, and economy points on districts for occupied territory. The last part is uh, really interesting, because when you attack territories adjacent to your own, reinforcements will pour in from surrounding territories, depending on the number and type of district. Anyway, moving on, we make an assault 
Cobalt on Parada, who are being blockaded by Vidoja's Sky Crusher, a gigantic surface-to-air battery. This is an issue for the faction, since their main export is a paper-thin aircraft based off a sketch by Da Vinci. We counter his wicked machinations by walking, and win the support of Parada. More importantly, we win the support of Lenora, Parada captain, and the person who's gonna crush Giacomo's head between her thighs in the post-game credits. Maybe. On one condition. Or what? And when you finally have the doge, make sure he suffers. I fucking love this cutscene. Each time there's something pre-rendered on screen, it's always hype. Next, we have a pressing issue. Uh, two of them, actually. Don Scalario and Lord Rocco. These act as the puppets of a doge, with Scalario providing financial support from the western city of Feligno, while Rocco is the key supplier of Timonium to the north. Before we can assault the doge's capital of Venucci, we need to sever these sources of support. Honestly, uh, I don't think this affects the campaign, and I don't care. I care more about the fact that these guys steal territory every single turn. So, we're gonna make a beeline for Rocco. On the way there, we conquer Condettieri Castle and unify the Condettieri. In the real world, this word means mercenaries fighting for Italian states. In Rise of Legends, this means unhinged, unwashed, feral Italians. These are tribalistic primitives who eat their pasta completely raw, snapping the pasta bone to drink the delicious marrow inside. After that, we enter Monte Laguna, which is under siege by self-driving clockwork. New Tesla update dropped, and unfortunately, it's misidentifying Italians as Sicilians. We gotta take down the fabricators, and subsequently, whatever this is. Next, we go to the same region where Petruzzo was murdered. To pay respects, no, to do a timed mining objective, but mainly so I can progress time by another turn. Why? Because I've been stacking research points to unlock the Juggernaut, and I've been stacking army points to fill my army with Juggernauts. It's worth explaining at this point that larger units can trample smaller units, and a fucking tank is uh, significantly larger than most units. When half my damage is just right click Looking past the enemy, I got a pretty good deal. Anyway, on to Rocco's capital. This is the same place we get Distruzio, who is simultaneously the best and the worst hero in the entire game. Aside from Giacomo, he's the only person with a wide radius heal, and he's also the only hero with a small, negligible chance at throwing the wrong grenade. He's my favorite hero, because there's literally nobody else who's managed to make me rage quit and restart a scenario multiple times, and yet I still pick him every time. The mission itself is pretty easy, because uh, Destruzio's forces take most of the heat and buy you time to uh, build free juggernauts and pound Rocco's base into oblivion. One puppet down, one more to go. We head south for Corbinile Mines, which have already been captured by Scladio. Some maps don't have a specific scenario or objective, and instead playing like a standard skirmish map in single player. The difference being that I spawn in with two juggernauts, which means I right click his base and come back to a victory screen. We assault Feligno, which has the gimmick of being built on a mountain, forcing us to slowly travel economy on a zeppelin to actually get there. Along the way, we can also rescue some captured prisoners, which include Bataglion, a hero who can one-shot cities. Despite this insane power level, freeing him is completely optional. You see, to finish a mission, you only need to complete the main objective. Bonus objectives are take it or leave it. You might miss them and not even know what exactly you missed. That's why every time I do a mission, I peek the quest log. If I see any random question marks in the bonus section, I know there's something out there. Two stooges gone, now we just have to deal with a doge, which is uh, harder than it sounds. As we took Feligno, doge took Monte Laguna. I tried retaking it, but his walker is insanely OP, so I reload it and took Salea Forest instead. Doge pushes again and takes Corbinile Mines, but this time, I learned how to properly micro my troops. Also, I had free juggernauts. This may have helped. We push on to Dursi, which is a timed prison break scenario. Also, my recording software broke for like 20 minutes, and it sounds like this. I have confirmed that some of the Doge's own magistrates are being held here. 
I must have disagreed with his latest policies. Basically, we have to rescue a bunch of magistrates he's imprisoned to loosen his political grip on Venucci, and we have to do it before reinforcements show up and murder us. Afterwards, we take Ranconi, which is only accessible by bridge. The Doge attempts to block our advance by sending a truck of peace, which we counter with a tank of love and tolerance. Finally, we invade Venucci, take out his land leviathan, capture his Doge cannon, and point it directly at his troops. But the Doge is nowhere to be found. The Doge, where is he? Where's his army? A child could have won this battle. Carlini gives you the dire news. These look like tracks from the Doge's hammer. They are. But we captured it. When did... He built more than one. We captured a decoy. The real one is headed east. He drew us out, Giacomo. We've been tricked. The real Doge cannon is heading east towards Miana. And that's the end of the first campaign. Let's start the second. Spoiler! We uh, didn't make it on time. Miana has been deleted from existence. Inexplicably, after committing Italian Nagasaki, the Doge's army marches east through the desert kingdoms of the Aline, and we set out in hot pursuit. Speaking of hot, uh, we're not built for this environment. We need shelter, and we need it fast. So we decide to take the help of a mystic who is definitely not going to betray us. Even the noblest of people can be corrupted by power, Giacomo. Five minutes later, the mystic betrays us. Luckily, we're saved by Ari, Giacomo's childhood friend, and taken to the court of Azar Harif, where we get shelter and a bit of backstory. You sure seem to know your way around. I visited here a long time ago. Visited? Try ran away. It took us four months to find him, and we could barely drag him home. Giacomo! I liked it here. I bet you did. Lenora's not happy about the desert, but even less happy about Ari. And she leaves, despite the fact that I only have eyes for her. I already know Ari's only desire for Giacomo is to birth a child that's slightly higher up on the Aline caste system. I have no interest in her wicked plans. Let's get some things out of the way. Who are the Aline? They're dark, swarthy, Arabic, desert-dwelling wizards with cities that float in the sky. They summon elementals from circles of sand, fire, and glass. As there are no humans in this world, we must consider the next logical alternative. The Aline are Sicilians, and they're currently having a problem with a dark Aline. Basically, more alien debris crash-landed deep into the desert. Mine broke the genie Sawu, who created creatures of dark glass to overrun Mezakesh, the greatest Aline city ever built, which has ever since been buried under a mile of sand. But ever since the Doge passed through, promising to improve the situation, the dark Aline have awoken in full force. Our only hope to stop whatever the Doge is planning is to find Mezakesh. Your Highness, please! We must You're listen under to- attack! What? Dark Aline in the city! But before that, we have a city to defend. This mission serves as the Aline tutorial, and it does a pretty good job of it. What's never mentioned, however, is that Giacomo's walker has been upgraded. His EVA unit is now equipped with a sunscreen. This is critical to the plot. Also, this campaign has a very annoying mechanic. Every time you kill any one of the three genies on the map, several turns later, they'll respawn randomly anywhere inside their territory. That is a problem, because there's three of them and one of you. So the only valid tactic is to rush the bottom of the map as fast as possible and cut them off, funneling them into a choke where their numbers won't matter. Failure to do so results in your map looking like this. First, we take the southern dunes, where we get assaulted every night by waves of salamanders, which stop during the day, where you have a chance to attack their lairs and kill the BBW queen salamanders that keep spawning them. Then, we murder the same genie that tricked us at the start, and push on to the nest of dragons. Our objective here is to free a bunch of dragons before they're corrupted. However, the first dragon you free is so powerful, he can free the rest on his own. Mission design in this game is either win by a hair's length, or win by starting the mission. There is no in-between. I had to pivot north because I was getting my shit pushed in, and the next mission was definitely more of a former. You have to hold out and defend a single oasis for 18 minutes while controlling two players at once, Giacomo from the south and Politori, a former Doge chemical warfare specialist from the north. The oasis has so little health that if anything so much as sneezes on it, 
it's gone. The last minute features a glass dragon that can one-shot the thing, and generally, it's complete and utter chaos. I push on to a generic skirmish map. A genie respawns right in front of us, who we proceed to murder in another generic skirmish. Then we take the Bright Lands, which turns out to be a completely useless red herring, before I have to fight another skirmish to push back another genie. I push forward to the Fool's Path, which instead says Kalahi's Desert in the loading screen. I feel drunk, because I realize half the maps in this game don't even match the name of the mission. I load in, and to my horror, it's another generic skirmish. Luckily, the one after that is a real mission, and also our main objective. We need to subdue and capture the Sand Warden de Claw, who's currently going apeshit. To do this, we're going to beat the shit out of him. Unfortunately, the Dark Aline have the same idea, and it's a race to the finish. It's a battle of domestic violence, and only the stronger backhand will prevail. We're gonna show de Claw the meaning of love in an Eastern European household. De Claw provides us with one of the keys to Mezakesh. Now, we just need the key of fire to the north. We proceed with the best mission of the entire game. Giacomo smokes that gas station weed, which inevitably has been laced with PCP. Petruzzo, where are you? I'm lost. This entire mission is just Giacomo tweaking out from the effects of a dark loud. The salamander is such a curious creature. I must find more of them. You must escort him and keep him safe as he battles tactile hallucinations and metabolizes the corrupted chronic. I... I've recovered from my madness. We then free Andromalek, a glass magic user, and subsequently rescue the Fire Warden Dominur. With both keys, we get access to Mezakesh. And then, I rage quit the game anywhere from 20 to 30 times. Reasons may include Glass Golem boss fight that one-shots your heroes, Glass Golem boss fight that goes through damage immunity, Glass Spider boss fight that stuns your entire army, for which I had to learn the specific spawn conditions, so I could bait the screen-wide stun and sacrifice only half of my army instead. And, of course, every time Destruzio fumbles a grenade, which is often. However, we persevere and defeat Sawu, who joins us after being freed from the alien sissy Hypno. If only it were that simple. My dear Giacomo, how have you been? I brought a toy for you to play with. Enjoy. Luckily, Lenora's brought reinforcements. Together, while dodging payloads of insta-kill shells from across the map, you charge Vidoja's army and destroy his cannon. In exchange, you get this sick-ass cutscene, where Giacomo wins by repairing a clock and pulling copper wire. Just as we achieve victory, an alien ship appears overhead to repo the Doge's alien weapon. And that's the start of the third campaign. We follow the ship to the jungle, and there we find a couple of jungle dwellers who have been forcibly boosted by a couple tech levels. The Kawasal represent the hybridization between the biology of the natives and the advanced technology of the aliens. If we take their appearance into account and the time period this game was released, the natives are basically Jaffa warriors from Stargate SG-1. Woman be silent. That is not an answer, Tilk. Come on, they even have staff weapons. Just like evidence of Fermite found at Ground Zero. This is probably just a coincidence. Anyway, we do the first mission and a cutscene plays, where Giacomo and Carlini defeat the Moon God, one of the four alien generals masquerading as theological beings on this planet. Unfortunately, another god shows up, and Carlini starts a monologue. So I immediately knew he was about to die. I've been a soldier for 43 years. I've had my leg blown off. I've served in two wars. I've killed more men than I can count. I've never backed down from anything in my life. I'm sure as hell not gonna start today. The Death God Zin kills Carlini and takes the alien device stolen by the Doge. Wait a minute, w wasn't that device taken by the alien ship in the last cutscene? Uh, apparently no. Sorry for the confusion. I had to watch this multiple times to figure out that Giacomo shot down that aircraft off screen. Also, Giacomo took a full hit of the alien device juice. He can now convert base metals into AliExpress quartz crystals. Using this newfound power, he spliced his mech into the dead body of the moon god. 
We'll march out at sunrise. Our objective is getting justice for my homeboy Carlini by killing the remaining free gods. So we do exactly that. We murder Zill, the sun god to the south. We murder Shock, the storm goddess to the north. There are unique missions here and there, but for the sake of time, I'm skipping over them. Except the uh, cargo escort mission, which is completely rigged and designed to give you an aneurysm. The Colossal are quite fun to play, mainly because they're completely different to any other faction. They don't use gold because they don't trade. This is replaced instead by energy energy, which is produced by nuclear reactors. They can turbocharge any dwelling to print units faster, and uh, their basic barracks is actually a flying troop carrier. But nothing compares to my favorite unit, the Dick Flattening Sphere, which has the strongest trample in the entire game, deleting entire screens worth of troops just by moving over them. Finally, we reach the last mission of Rise of Legends, stopping the Death God Zin. If he isn't stopped within 60 minutes, he will activate the alien Skype call, and destroy life as we know it. But his position is fortified by free barriers, which have to be destroyed on both sides. All the forces, heroes, and upgrades you've acquired during the previous campaigns will be there to support you for this final assault. With Avinci on the left and the Aline on the right, you have to simultaneously control both armies and push past their defenses, which may include mechanized guerrillas, until the barriers shut down, at which point Giacomo's colossal forces break through the center. Completing the mission rewards you with this cutscene. Giacomo, Realizing the Skype call has already connected, jumps forward with a $2 microphone and screams racial slurs, the intensity of which explode the relay. At first I thought, where's Giacomo? Obviously he survived, right? It wasn't until the cutscene was over that I finally registered that he's dead. It's a very somber ending, and I don't like to grieve for too long. So, I rewrote the ending to suit my own headcanon. Yes, Giacomo did sacrifice himself, but plot twist. Same day we defeated the Doge, conveniently, Lenora was ovulating. This could only mean one thing. Rise of Legends 2 would be a real-time strategy where you must both conquer the battlefield and morning sickness. Campaigns become increasingly more difficult as you swell and become increasingly more pregnant. Available now on Xbox Game Pass. In summary, Rise of Legends gets a floating Rubik's Cube out of however many men are currently inside. It's great, I love it, and I enjoyed it just as much as I did an entire decade ago. Why did I cover this? Because they're memories and I don't want them lost to the sands of time. Unfortunately, the publisher is Microsoft, and uh, we've already made contact. They don't give a shit. It's not distributed or sold anywhere, making this game effectively abandonware. Now, uh, I wouldn't want to directly link to a download page for this game for obvious reasons. However, I can't possibly moderate my entire comment section. So if, hypothetically, somebody showed up and linked the entire game, and a bunch of people just upvoted it to the top comment, then what could I possibly do to stop this? So please, don't do that. Because each time you commit piracy of an abandoned IP that's not making any money for the parent company, there's a DMCA lawyer out there who gets an additional kidney stone that he has to shoot out of his burning urethra. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild generously funding and bankrolling these neutral settlement acquisitions. This episode is brought to you by Pastafici Sintoni. This is not a joke. You are not dissociating. The original reason I made this video was to plug a pasta sponsor, because I thought it was the funniest shit in the world that an Italian B2B pasta manufacturer decided one day that contacting me was the best use of their resources. Keep your money. The joke has paid for itself. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one.